I spoke with Farrell and asked him what it meant for him to see Juneteenth finally recognized as a federal holiday. Well, I think what it what it would mean to all of us, just as Americans, is that like we're finally acknowledging uh, this really important part of history as it pertains to African Americans and African diaspora. Um, there's been a lot going on in this country ever since we've, you know, were enslaved and brought to this country, um, and just you know, every acknowledgement is symbolic and 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 significant. And here is yet another one where it's like, you know, two years of of actually being freed and having our emancipation, but it not being observed or respected by, you know, the landowners. And so here we are. Um, it's a it's a beautiful thing to, to, to have it federally acknowledged. Uh, now we got we have to have um, the corporations to step up and actually make it a paid holiday um, as a part of their operational mandate as well. We've seen some progress on that front, and I know you've worked with some companies like Adidas, who you've got a yep. relationship with. Are, are you satisfied? There was a big rallying cry last year at this time to do this from companies. Are you satisfied with the progress we've seen? We can be appreciative, right? And I am appreciative to uh, Adidas 100%. But I think that satisfied is a very different, that's a, that's a whole mm -hmm. different like study in itself, right? I don't know that we could ever be satisfied, right? We we should always try, you know, try and strive for, um, you know, equality in this country, equal pay, um, no discrimination, uh, and not just for us as African Americans, but just like LGBTQIA, um, you know. Our Latinx brothers and sisters and well, our Latinx community as well. Um, it, there's just you know, women's rights. There's just so many things that we have to fix uh, in this country. And, um, you know, oftentimes the, the African-American culture gets skipped over. Beyond Juneteenth, we, we talk to so many companies here on CNBC every single day and executives that are focused on diversity and inclusion, boosting the numbers, at the, core, at the management level, at the board level, the pipeline, especially of black employees, what would you tell them on this issue of how they can do better? The founding fathers were just that. They were founders, you know? They were just like a founder of a company, you know? They were entrepreneurs. But that hasn't been afforded to everyone. So we wanna make like these opportunities more equitable. Um, in every job space. I, I know you're you're doing your part and you've launched this new VC fund slash nonprofit to fund black businesses and, and mentor them. How is that going? Well, it's called Black Ambition and thank you so much for asking. And it's going really well. For us, it's about, um, you know, we launched, we're launching a prize uh, for the greatest like ideas for business. But, you know, if you talk to like the less than 3% of VC founders in the private equity community of African-Americans and, and, and Latinx, they'll tell you money, it was very hard to come by, but, but the hardest thing was the mentorship. Um, and we're working with Bridgefan on the mentorship and some of the other uh, companies that have supported us and donated are also um, mentoring as well. That's going, that's going, Super well. And by the way, it's something that we did in partnerships with, you know, historic black colleges and universities, which is super important because there's so much amazing talent that, that come through those doors and um, they don't get enough light and enough attention. And so we felt like partnering with them um, and bringing in bigger corporations like Chanel and Adidas, um, Nike and, you know, of the sort we felt like that was gonna be the way to um, shine a light there. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.